friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Happy Monday friends, it is Monday, it's meal prep day. I have three amazing, amazing recipes for you this week. I'm so excited about them. So if you are here for meal prep, give this video a big huge thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. I do meal preps every single Monday and I upload five days a week. Check out the description box down below for my two recipe eBooks. I have released breakfast with 15 recipes, lunch with 15 recipes, all plan points included and calories amazing amazing recipes at your fingertips to keep you on track and make your life easy so definitely check those out down in the description box along with nutrition coaching I offer one-on-one -on -one macros and calories highly recommend and if you want to talk with me directly I have one-on-one -on -one coaching as well links discounts to everything I shared with you today and all my favorite things and my Facebook group definitely come join us lots of fun challenges ahead for the holiday season so head on over join us over on Facebook so let's jump into this weekly WW meal prep for my breakfast this week I'm making a hash brown sausage casserole or breakfast bake. Last week I did a sweet breakfast. This week I'm wanting a savory breakfast. This is very, very simple. There's really four ingredients and some salt and pepper. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need a bag of shredded hash browns thawed. So I did leave mine in the fridge overnight. Light shredded cheese, 99% extra lean ground turkey, eggs, salt and pepper. Now I will probably season my turkey with some poultry seasoning to give it a little bit more of that sausage vibe. It is kind of the faux sausage for this recipe, but if you don't have poultry seasoning, you can just use salt and pepper. So let's get started. I have my oven preheating to 450 degrees. I sprayed a nine by 13 baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to add this entire bag of hash browns thawed to the bottom of the baking dish. And then I'm going to season the hash browns with some salt and pepper. We're going to put the hash browns in the 450 degree oven for about 15 minutes while we cook up our sausage and get our eggs together. So for the turkey, I'm going to add my thawed pound of 99% ground turkey to a skillet sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And I'm going to add some poultry seasoning. Like I said, if you don't have this, no big deal. It's just going to bring out the vibes of sausage a little bit more with the sage and the yummy poultry seasoning. So I added about a tablespoon of that. We're going to get this frying up on the stove. We're also going to get our eggs whisked together while the hash browns are in the oven and the turkey is cooking. So I'm going to crack eight eggs into my bowl. I'm going to add some salt and pepper and then whisk that together and set it aside. I just took the hash browns out of the oven. They've gotten a little crispy on top. I'm going to add half of the egg mixture right over the top of the hash browns. And then I'm going to add about half of a cup of cheese. We're going to use two cups of cheese total, which is what is in this bag. So we'll end up using this whole bag of cheese. Then we're going to add the sausage mixture right over the top of the cheese and hash browns. Now the remainder of the eggs and the remainder of the cheese. So here is what the casserole looks like. I'm going to cover this with foil. Make sure your foil doesn't touch your cheese, otherwise you'll pull all the cheese off. I always spray the underside of my foil just in case. This is going into the oven, reduced heat to 350 for about 45 minutes. You wanna make sure the eggs are cooked all the way through. The sausage and hash brown casserole is out of the oven. Look how cheesy and delicious 
this looks i cannot wait for this all week troy already said that he's going to eat some of this so between the both of us we'll probably have this gone in less than half of a week but the entire casserole makes eight servings total it is five points per serving on blue and purple six on green because you do have to count extra for the eggs 282 calories per serving this is such a perfect breakfast you have protein carbohydrates you pair this with some healthy fat or some fruit and you have the ideal breakfast. Again, I cannot wait to have this all week. For lunch this week, I'm making buffalo chicken tacos with blue cheese coleslaw. I love blue cheese. I love buffalo. I love tacos. I cannot wait for my lunches. Let me show you what's in our recipe. I'm going to be using a cabbage blend. You can also use half of a head of green and half of a head of red cabbage if you prefer. I just did this because it's much easier. An onion, Dijon mustard and whole grain mustard. I'm actually out of whole grain mustard, so I'm just going to use double Dijon garlic a powder. The recipe also calls for celery salt, which I do not have. I don't really care for celery salt, so I'm omitting that, but that will be part of the original recipe. You can do shredded carrots or slice and peel whole carrots, whatever your preference. I'm using the Mission Extra Thin Tortillas, blue cheese, non-fat Greek yogurt, about a pound to two pounds of chicken, salt and pepper. I'm opting for vegetable broth because I have this to use up in my fridge, but you can also use chicken broth, apple cider vinegar, buffalo sauce of your choice, and light mayonnaise. So I'm going to go ahead and cook my chicken in my instant pot. The recipe calls for it to be cooked in a slow cooker. You can really cook your chicken however you want. You can use rotisserie chicken, whatever your preference is, but I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken breast into my instant pot. I did spray the bottom with some nonstick cooking spray. Then I'm going to add in that small yellow onion that I diced up. Next up are my shredded carrots. It's the equivalent of about one full carrot. So I'm just going to eyeball that. Garlic powder, salt and pepper. And lastly, two cups of broth right over the top of the onions, carrots, seasoning and chicken. We're going to pop the lid on this, allow this to cook for the preset time. I think it's 20 minutes in the Instant Pot. I just hit the chicken button. And then when that is done, we'll go ahead and get that shredded up. In the meantime, let's put together the blue cheese coleslaw. So again, I'm just using pre-made coleslaw. It actually works out great because it has green cabbage, red cabbage, and carrots and the original recipe does want you to add in some carrots as well so this is just a huge huge time saver and then we're adding in one half of a cup of non-fat greek yogurt the original recipe wanted one tablespoon of dijon and one tablespoon of whole grain i don't have the whole grain so i'm just going to do two tablespoons of dijon also two tablespoons of light mayo and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and one ounce of blue cheese crumbles. I'm also going to add in a little bit of salt and pepper. And then just using my fork, I'm going to blend this together. I wanna to make sure that yogurt, apple cider vinegar, and mayo, oh, and the mustard get mixed really well with the coleslaw. And here is the blue cheese slaw. This looks so good, it smells so good. I am a huge, huge lover of blue cheese. You could eliminate the blue cheese from the recipe if you don't like it. You could also use feta, goat cheese, really any kind of cheese that you want. But what I'm going to do is just put this here in this storage container for the week because we actually are going to top our tacos with this throughout the week. So I'm gonna get it all ready to go in the storage container so that I can use it all week. So I went ahead and shredded up the chicken after I pulled it out of the Instant Pot. And the last step is to add in some buffalo sauce. You can do a third of a cup to a half of a cup, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to add a little at a time until my chicken is covered with the sauce the way that I prefer it. So there is the buffalo chicken. That looks really, really good. I do have lots of sauce left. So if I need to add a little more sauce before eating, I can do that. But let's go over the points and calories. I'll show you exactly how I'm putting together the buffalo chicken tacos. So here is everything for the buffalo chicken tacos with blue cheese 
coleslaw. So first I have the uh, buffalo chicken. I am going to go ahead and transfer it into a glass storage container similar to what I have the blue cheese slaw in. And then we're going to serve that with the Mission Extra Thin Tortillas. It is two tacos or two tortillas per serving. And the entire batch of ch chicken and slaw makes eight servings total. It is three points on blue and purple, five on green because you do have to count for the chicken. It is 196 calories for two tacos, which is not bad at all. This is going to be such a good lunch. As you know, my husband doesn't like buffalo anything, so whenever I can make it into a meal prep, it makes my heart happy. So this is my lunch for the week. For a sweet treat this week, I'm making chocolate caramel shortbread bars. I'm so excited for these. I love shortbread. Fun fact, it's one of my favorite, favorite types of cookies. So we are making a WW calorie friendly version. So let me show you what's in our recipe. I'm going to be using honey in place of corn syrup. I thought I had corn syrup, but I don't. So I'm hoping that using honey will have the overall same effect, but corn syrup is what's called for in the recipe. I'm using fat free sweetened condensed milk, Lily's chocolate chips. This is the Lakanto brown sugar, my very, very favorite. I do have a discount for Lakanto. I'll put it down in the description box for you. This is also the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener, also one of my very favorites. Some all purpose flour and some light butter. So, to get started on the bars, we're going to put together the crust, get this into the oven while we create the caramel layer. So, I'm adding one and a quarter cups of flour to a medium sized bowl, one quarter cup of Lakanto monk fruit sweetener and two thirds of a cup of room temperature light butter. And then I'm just going to work this together until it creates that crumbly texture where that butter gets chopped up and combined with those dry ingredients. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I did spray an eight by eight. You could use a nine by nine baking dish with some non stick cooking spray. I'm going to add the crust ingredients to the pan and and then I'm just going to take my hand and push this down, creating a crust. The crust or the shortbread layers going in the oven for 20 minutes. And in the meantime, we'll start making that caramel layer. So for the caramel layer, I have a saucepan here. To that, I'm going to add one half of a cup of packed brown sugar substitute, one half of a cup of light butter, one half of a cup of fat-free sweetened condensed milk, and then two tablespoons of honey in place of corn syrup. So I have the caramel layer here in my saucepan on medium high heat. We are going to bring this to a boil. This is a very finicky part of the recipe. We want to make sure we're stirring constantly. We don't want any of the brown sugar to crystallize. Otherwise, it's just not as pretty on the bars. Now it'll taste the same, but it's just not going to be as pretty. And then once it is at a boil, and it's been boiling for five minutes. We're gonna remove it from the heat and vigorously stir it for three minutes to get it nice and combined. And at that point, our shortbread should be out of the oven. And while that's still hot, we're gonna pour the caramel sauce right on top. This caramel looks incredible. So I'm immediately, per the recipe, going to pour it over my crust. I just took the shortbread crust out of the oven. I'm going to spread it as evenly as I can over the top. Oh my gosh, this looks so delicious. So I have three ounces of Lily's chocolate chips and all I did is melt them down with a little bit of milk just to make it a little bit easier. And then I'm going to do my best to spread this on top of the caramel. It is okay if it kind of swirls together. It actually looks really pretty when it does that. So here are the bars. These look so good, you guys, I smell. Incredible, I am going to go ahead and pop these into my refrigerator until everything is set. All right, let's go over points and calories of the chocolate caramel shortbread bars. I seriously am so excited for these. Shortbread speaks right to my heart. You will cut this into 16 servings. Each bar is only four points on all plans and 121 calories. That is not bad at all. Less than 150 calories. So I cannot wait to have this little sweet treat all week.
Thank you for joining me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all three recipes. Spoiler alert, they're amazing, so definitely check them out. I will link my website that houses all of my recipes down in the description box for you, along with my two recipe ebooks, nutrition coaching, links, discounts to all my favorite things, and my Facebook group. Make sure you come join us over there. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and of course, if you're new or you're not subscribed, we'd love to have you join our community. Simply hit the subscribe button, the bell next to it, and you are good to go. Thank you again for watching. Happy Monday, friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye.